Hello and welcome to Old Lady Plays. I'm Kate, the old lady, and this is Tips for the Beginner Football Manager, Episode 4, Making a Transfer. So that's going to be today's topic. We're going to be looking at how to make a transfer, what you do to, to initiate a transfer, um, how to respond to an incoming transfer offer, that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, I'm going to make my quick announcement in Spanish, and then we're going to get right into it, okay? Let's do that. Hola a todos! Este video uh, tutorial de Football Manager trae subtítulos en español disponibles listo para activar el botón en la esquina de inferior derecha. Que lo disfruten! Alright, here we are. Time to look at making a transfer. We'll start with how to make a transfer out, how to sell a player, okay? So that's going to be the plan. Let's have a look at our squad, see if we can identify anybody who could be sold. Well, look, we got Paulo Gazaniga. We got three goalkeepers. I don't really need three goalkeepers. Let's let's sell Paulo Gazaniga, okay? Um, ordinarily, I wouldn't. I actually do like keeping three goalkeepers around, but for now, this will make a good experiment. So right click on Gazaniga, go to transfer and offer to clubs, the easiest way to get him sold. So we click on that, pops up this screen. Now from here you're given a bit of information about the player, his value, his wage, some stuff about him, how old he is, you can look at his stats and stuff, um, and so on. Okay. And the other things you've got here is you can choose whether this is negotiable or non-negotiable. You can make it a transfer offer or a loan offer. That is to say you're offering them out to, a, to loan to somebody. Um, in this case we're going to go with transfer just because. We're going to say we want six million for him because that's his value. And um, we can add things. We can add extra fees, like we could pay, could add installments. Say I wanted to just pay this at, oh, I don't know. Let's say we only wanted to pay $2 million up front. That was an inefficient way to do this. There we go. Then we could go installments, 12 monthly, uh, two installments of $2 million each. There. No, okay, I've got that backwards. It should be four million. Alright, so you put the total in this side here. Alright. It'll tell you the potential value of the of the transfer down here, potential value of six million. The other things you can add are clauses, which would be things like a loan back length, percentage of profit from next sale, percentage of next sale, a buyback price, selling team wage contribution. All of these are fairly evident, right? Of what they're what they're actually doing. Um, so I'm not going to go too deeply into any one of them. Uh, one box I tend to suggest you tick is transfer list and set players surplus to requirements. What that does is signal to other teams that he is available and um, tells them that. You know, if you if they put a bid in, it'll probably be accepted. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say offer to clubs. Offer Paolo Gazzaniga to clubs. Yes. And that's it. We've just offered him out for transfer. Okay. Let's have a quick peek forward. Offers made for Tottenham's Gazzaniga. We've got offers coming in already. So let's go have a look at what the offers are and how we can choose whether or not to accept them. Okay? So let's go in and look at this offer here and click on the arrow to show the offer. Uh, okay. So uh, we've got a list of the officer offers here. All right. This one comes from Flamengo in Brazil. They're offering two and a half million up front and a further 670k by installment and 700k after 50 games of league appearances and they've made their offer non-negotiable so their total offer value is 3.8 million 
that's a little lower than I wanted. So let's look at the other um, offers that we got. Shakhtar Donetsk offered 2.7 up front, a tiny amount in, and a tiny amount in other fees. So yeah, not much. And Zenit offers 2.1 up front, another million in installments, and another million in league appearances after 50 appearances, again non-negotiable. So I have to pick which of these I like the best, and I think the 4 million one is the one I'm going to go for, because it's the biggest. 3.8, 3.4, and 4 million. Sounds to me like Zenit is the one, and my client wants to, sp now this is the other important piece, my client wants to speak to Zenit as he is on the transfer list. All right, so since we transfer listed him, he wants to be able to speak to some of these clubs, and in this case it's Zenit St. Petersburg, he wants to, to um, and if you want him to join one of the others, you can pr try and persuade him to join one of the others. We don't have to do that because we're going to actually accept the offer from Saint Zenit St. Petersburg and say, okay, and accept, and then, oh my goodness, this is taking so long. There we go. So here we are. Paulo Gazaniga has agreed terms with Zenit, is excited to be joining them, is happy to be leaving following his transfer listing, would pay a certain amount of money to Southampton because of the um, clause they negotiated when they sold him to us. Subject to conditions, the transfer may eventually rise to four million. A couple of other clubs get a little pieces of the transfer fee. And 2.1 million will be added to my transfer budget on completion of the deal. And we accept. And there, then it signed Gadzaniga. And we've sold Gadzaniga. That was it. That's all there is to it. So you've seen how to offer a player out on transfer. Um, now we'll have a quick look at how you deal with incoming offers. Um, well, I guess you've seen how we've dealt with incoming offers. So maybe we'll move on from just the automatic stuff. Um, you can always look at your transfers that are underway here by choosing either all, in, or out. All right here's an in. It's um, another physio, an under 18's physio. Just waiting to confirm his, his um, employment status. And uh, here we are with the various other the loan offers that we've had come in and we've accepted um, and we're seeing what's there yeah that's fine okay um, so let's look at how you find those players just at least a little bit of the way and how we find those players one of the ways if you have a director of football, okay, if you have a director of football, you can ask your director of football to suggest transfer targets, okay? So, say we decide that we're a little short in center midfield. I'm not sure that we are, but we'll ask, we'll suggest that. So, we say to him, let's go find us center midfielders. So he'll jump out and, and look around and make three suggestions, generally speaking. Um, they will usually be top players, um, and often they do not pay attention, the, the, the director of football does not pay attention to your um, transfer budget when suggesting players you can buy. So they may or may not be somebody you can actually afford. In this case, they want 32 million, 30 million, and 30 million, and we only have 21 or 23 million in the bank. 15 million, 15, we have 15 million in the bank. So we have half what we need for any of these guys. So unfortunately, the DOF suggestions are completely useless for us today. But that's how you do it. You get the DOF suggestions. That's going to do it for this first segment. I will be back in a minute with a plug video for my for one of my small creators 
not even a small creator. In fact, this one's going to be a big creator. But he's a really good big creator, so I think you'll really enjoy his work. Um, I'll be back in a moment with that, and then after that we'll come back with the second half, and we'll be looking at more transfers, loans, scouting, that kind of thing. All right, Not scouting in, in the in-depth, but just sort of getting started with scouting. So that's the plan. I hope you can stick around for that. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so as we reach the midway point of this video, I thought we'd stop for a second. We'll take a pause, let you let that soak in for a minute, and we'll take a minute to look at a video, a 30-second video from Gray Hair Gaming. Now, Gray Hair Gaming is kind of like a mentor to me. I think he's one of the best creators around, and I aspire to get to his levels of, of editing and humor and presentation and everything else. So I really think you're going to like him. Have a look. Hello, old lady play viewer. How are you? My name is Gray Hair Gaming. Been making content since FM17. Got about 5,800 subscribers on YouTube. Currently with Otto Den Haag. Um, really fascinating story. I've really tried to up my editing game this year, so I encourage you to check it out. Although I will give you a fair warning. I'm not old lady plays. I don't know 47 languages, and I play in English. So, you know, if you're used to her switching around a lot, that's not going to happen on my channel, but she's part of my Discord, so if she thinks it's good enough, you might come check it out. we got a great little community. We'll see you soon. Welcome back. It's time to get on with the second half. Let's have a look here. What we're going to do is actually buy somebody. Um, I have changed teams so that we can have a nice big fat transfer budget, and I have identified a transfer target, and we're going to go out and fetch them. If we can, we're going to get Jose Gaia for Paris Saint-Germain. Here he is. He's a pretty good looking fullback. Um, I think he'll do the job that we need for this team and uh, let's bring him in. So we start with, let's ask the agent about his availability. This is a really useful new tool that they put into the game this year. So let's see what he says. For a deal to be likely, it would be important that the following needs are met. He expects to provide competition for places and earn plenty of playing time over the course of the season. That's telling us how much playing time he's going to want. He'd want a wage of 110 k per week, that's fine. And Valencia will want somewhere between 38 and 53 million to make a deal possible. Well, we've got 42 million in the transfer kitty, so hopefully we've got enough to do it. So this looks promising. We've got a pretty good chance here I th I'd say um, we're already rumored to be interested in the player now we're gonna pretend we've already done all the due diligence and scouted them and everything all right so Jose Gaia let's make an offer all right so he said between 38 million and 52 million so let's start with 40 million since we've got that in our budget anyway and see what they do when we suggest it. All right, they're suggesting 45 million. Well, that's a little more than we've got, but let's see what they do when we bring it up to 41. Down to 44. Um, all right, we're gonna go back down to 40 and we're gonna add installments, six monthly, two installments of uh, to add 2.5 million there we go all right so that's now a full um, 42.5 for this um, suggestion and they're happy to take that so there you go that's a little bit of creative use of the um, of the installments so I didn't want to go over my transfer budget which I can't do so in order to not go above it, I put some of it on my credit card, effectively, and that's acceptable to them. So that's good. Now we have to wait until we find out whether or not he's interested. All right, here we go. So Valencia have accepted an offer of 42.5 million for Paris, from Paris SG for Jose Gaia. He has considerable interest in negotiating terms. That's exciting news for us. He wants to be a squad player. That should be fine for us. 
and he wants a wage somewhere between 88 and 120 K. That seems pretty reasonable. Now we've got two ways we can deal with this. Because we have a director of football, we can hand over to Leonardo, which is our director of football, and say, here, you negotiate this. Or, and this is what I generally prefer to do, we start negotiations and do it ourselves. So let's do that. All right, we start here. On this page, you've got uh, a bit about the agent. So it tells you um, what the client wants. He's saying right now, this is what my client would like to be guaranteed at this preliminary stage before and now. So he doesn't want any promises that he's mentioned. Notice that he's got a very low patient score. He's regarded as a very impatient negotiator. Do we get any, for, any more information about him? Um, here we go. He is known to prefer his clients to remain at their current clubs while also being regarded as a very impatient negotiator. That's important to keep in mind, okay? So if he wanted promises, we could offer him all kinds of different promises here. They range from what playing time he'd have in a given year to I'll point you as captain or vice captain or we'll make you a free kick taker, uh, we'll play you in your preferred position and role, um, we'll look to strengthen the following areas of the first team squad. All right, lots of different possibilities here. So, you know, lots of lots of options for what you want to do with your with your promises. In this case, we don't have to offer any promises, so we're happy with that. And squad player seems a reasonable um, seems a reasonable place. My assistant manager is actually suggesting that I should be putting him on a, on an important player, but if he only wants squad player, I'm going to give him squad player because that makes my life much easier. Okay. What you're agreeing to there is how often is he going to play, all right? With a squad player, he's looking to play probably half the games as starts, maybe a little more, um, maybe another quarter as subs, and, and, you know, he can miss the other games kind of thing. So that's what you're going to want from a squad player. Um, his bid, all right, his opening offer is this. Uh, this is the terms my client is asking for, and this is this is an important little tidbit here, is that this will tell you um, a lot about the the attitude of the agent. If it says here, for instance, these are my client's initial demands, then you're looking at a at a tough negotiation because he started off by presenting you with demands. In this case, he's saying these are the terms my client is asking for. So he's being quite reasonable about it. Now, he wants a huge signing fee. Um, let's see if we can bring that down a bit. I'm going to bring that down to down by a million. And we'll bring the agent fee down just a bit as well. There's nothing else there particularly. We could add a clause, for instance, that um, gives him a yearly wage rise. I like to do this, although, you know, a lot of people really hate wage rises. but Here's the thing. If you give someone a wage rise, then they don't always have to keep coming back to you to ask for a new contract. So one of the ways you can keep a player more satisfied with his contract over the years that he spends with your club is by giving him a small wage rise. I always cap it at 5%, like I'll put it in at 5% and cap it, right? Lock it down using the button over here. So. It, it, I'm not I'm saying I won't go up on that but you can have a 5% rise in wage um, and as a result I'm going to bring down the initial wage I'm offering to a hundred and see whether he'll go for that with the with the wage rise in nope he wants the full yeah he went right back to exactly what he started with now remember he's got no patience so what does he say? Here are my client's latest demands. Okay, so now we're getting serious. My client wishes to point out that offering the requested wage would go a long way to coming to an agreement. All right, a requested wage is one thing, but we don't have to give him all these extra things. Um, let's try that. Let's see whether we can get away with that. 
and it's green, so he feels these terms are acceptable and wishes to evaluate all his options before informing you of his final decision. So there we go, we've negotiated uh, a transfer pretty much through the end. That's the end of that. We now wait for him to make his decision, and once he makes his decision, we sign him. Well, the, the medical team has a look at him, and then we sign him. Um, anyway, I think that's going to do it for this week. I hope you found that useful, um, focusing on transfers overall. Next week, we're going to have something a little different, so I'm going to hand you over to future me and the editor me, and we are going to, you know, do our thing and and do 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 and we'll get to the next scene. All right, see you next week. Hello, time once again for a short video introducing you to one of the new creators in. The community, well, not new. It's, he's not new to the community, but he's new to you, and that is Ragin Cajun. Got a great channel. Been running for a couple of years now. At least I think that's how long he's been running. But he's got nearly 600 subs. Let's see if we can go make it over 600. And um, I think you'll really enjoy his content. So get over there and have a look after you've seen this. Hey guys, RC here. Just wanted to give a brief introduction to my channel. I am a fourth year YouTuber going into my fourth year doing football manager content. I have over 1900 videos uploaded in that time. The majority are football manager and taking a look at my recent uploads. We've got two basic saves going on. We have a journeyman style save that I'm patterning around Marcelo Bielsa and we're starting off in the Ukraine with Bolin Lusk. And then we are also doing a single team save in the Netherlands with the Graf Shop. So hope you come by, check them out, and let me know what you guys think. Take care. Bye. Okay, that's all for this week. We're going to move on to next week. And next week on Tips for the Beginner Football Manager, we have episode five, which is training. We're going to teach you how to use the training module. And when I say we, I mean we because I don't know much about the training. I've never really done it myself. I've not really enjoyed it, so I've never done it. And so what I'm going to do this next week is bring in a friend of mine who's much better at this and who will be able to guide you through the process of training. That's Matt. And so I will be introducing him next week and we'll be looking at his videos on how to deal with training. Okay? So... I hope you have a great week. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and take care.